Welcome to our Caris Online Service. We are so happy to have you with us even today. For those of you who are new, welcome to our service. And for those of you who are Caris members, we are so delighted to have you in our service. Open your heart in worship unto the Lord and that allow the Word of God to minister to you even as it's being preached because I believe that through God, all things are possible. May you have a blessed service. Hallelujah. God is for us. We won't fear the battle. We won't fear the night. We will walk the valley with you by our side. We will go before us. You will lead the way. I found a refuge only you can say Sing with joy now, our God is for us The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress Raise your voice now, no love is greater Who can stand against us if our God is for us? love is sure. You will not abandon, you will not forsake. You will cheer me on with never-ending grace. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now. No love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Neither height nor depth can separate us. strong and mighty fortress raise your voice now no love is greater who can stand against us if our god is for us sing for joy now our god is for us the father's love is a strong and mighty fortress raise your voice now no love is greater who can stand against us if our god is You are always, always for us. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to continue to lift our hearts, lift our voices, lift our hands to worship you because God, you are so good. Because God, you are so great. Because God, you are so, so worthy. We love you, Lord. Thank you, God. I lift my voice to sing you praise. No matter what life may bring my way I know that you are the God of my life You are the one who holds it all And I lift my hands to worship find a love so true I know that you are 
your presence will be so tangible to each and every one of your children, oh God, Lord. And God, we will call upon you. When we call upon you, Lord, you will answer us. Lord, we will be able to truly encounter you, experience you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. The day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Pentecost is a celebration of God, a celebration of God's power, a celebration of God's desire to empower us and to dwell within us. The early church believers faced difficult, even severe seasons marked by political, social and religious opposition and even first century AD pandemics. None of these beat them down or defeated them. Instead, the forefathers of our faith grew stronger through the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 is the promise of Jesus that was fulfilled. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Today in 2021, we certainly don't have all the necessary tools to fully combat the COVID-19 pandemic. But we do have the power of the Holy Spirit, for He is always with us. We, the Church of Jesus Christ, have the opportunity to seize the message and change the narrative of a world weakened by our present pandemic to a church empowered by the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit will not in any way be diminished by our current world war against COVID-19. So, be in one accord in prayer. Be a witness of the gospel. Be God's extension of His healing power. Dear Father, I thank you that once again, O oh God, we have an opportunity to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. I pray, oh God, that you will release a mighty Holy Spirit pandemic in our churches and also all over the world, oh God. Oh Lord, we know that this can happen even though we cannot be in the same place, even though we cannot touch one another, but this can happen because we pray and we pray in unity and because we seek for the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. I pray, oh God, that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon every pastor that they will experience a brand new anointing every church that all our churches will come alive in faith come alive in holiness come alive in powerful witness i pray oh god that you will grace every one of us preachers with the message of pentecost that we will have the anointing to preach on the mighty baptism of the holy spirit and lord that when we preach and pray oh god that you will baptize your church with the mighty baptism of the holy spirit I pray, O oh God, that you give us, so far, the revelation from your word that we can begin to teach about life in the Spirit and how our churches 
can walk in the spirit with victory and with wisdom lord i thank you dear father bless our churches bless our pastors bless the assemblies of god in jesus wonderful name amen Amen and amen. This weekend is indeed Pentecost weekend. And I'd like to invite you to turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 6. These two passages of Scripture that I'm going to work together to explain to you how that God has a blessing for every one of us. Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 5 and 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Verse 6, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Will you pray with me even right now? Father, we honour you. Jesus, we praise you. And Holy Spirit, we invite you even right now that in this service, in the preaching of your word, let your anointing come and quicken the word that is going to be preached, that it will become the lamb to our feet, that it will become that double-edged sword that will be able to chop off every single bondages and that you will set us free, O God, into the abundant life. So Holy Spirit, I just invite you to do your own sovereign work among us, even as we dedicate this entire time to you, through Jesus' blessed name. Amen and amen. I'd like to title this message as, Life and Peace Through the Spirit. Life and Peace Through the Spirit. Friends, let me ask you a question. Are you filled with life and peace? Or is your life filled with stress, fears, confusion, and depressive feelings? I wouldn't be surprised, especially in this season of pandemic that we are in. And if you are struggling with the negative, today's truth from the Word of God, I believe, will be the answer in setting us free. I will get to that. But meanwhile, over this weekend, as I mentioned, even as you have seen in the video just now, all over the world, churches are commemorating Pentecost. Now, what is Pentecost? In the Old Testament, Pentecost was originally known as the Feast of the Harvest, which was celebrated by the Israelites. Even today, they commemorate Pentecost. So, it was an Old Testament ceremony or a kind of a festival that celebrated God's blessings in giving them a good harvest. However, it was also on this day in the New Testament and after the ascension of Jesus that the phenomenon of the baptism of the Holy Spirit was experienced by the 120 followers of Jesus who obeyed the Lord's instructions to pray together and just wait upon Him. Now, you can read that in Acts chapter 1. 
They did. They obeyed, not knowing what to expect. And so the Bible tells us, on that fateful day, which actually coincided with the Old Testament Pentecost festival, the 120 believers who were gathered at what is called as the upper room, praying together, just obeying what the Lord has said, don't go anywhere, just wait, just wait. The Lord has already ascended and they had to obey because they do not know what to do. They do not know what else is going to happen. So they just waited there in prayer together and lo and behold, on that faithful day, the Bible described to us what happened. A divine visitation came and there was a mighty wind that came and they all were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now friends, I want you to know it was more than just the ability to speak in tongues because as a result of that day, few things happened. Number one, their lives were drastically changed from being fearful, confused and uncertain. They were transformed to be bold and courageous, able to face the severe persecutions and even the many challenges of the early centuries. They were filled with power to witness for Jesus, winning many new souls into His kingdom. They also performed great signs and wonders under the name of Jesus, just as Jesus promised that they will have the ability to do. It was also, my dear brothers and sisters, on that day that the church was born because 3,000 new souls came into the kingdom of God after Peter stood up and preached a sermon explaining to them what was happening. And as a result, the church was born and the new church was already 3,000 people strong. Wow, what a phenomenon, isn't it? That's why I say it is more than just the ability to speak in tongues, but the lives being changed and the birth of the church of Jesus Christ. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? I would not take it for granted that every one of us are familiar, but who is the Holy Spirit? And what does He actually do in our lives? Now, my dear friends, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Co-existing, co-equal. Alright? He is the Spirit of God that comes dwelling in us and awaken our spirit to the consciousness of God. Alright? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 tells us, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? That's right. That ever since that we are washed under the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross, our lives were sanctified. The Old Testament believers did not have this privilege. The Holy Spirit did not reside in them because they were yet to be redeemed or totally redeemed. It is us, ever since Jesus died for us at the cross, since the New Testament time, even until now, when you and I accepted the Lord, the blood of Jesus cleanses us, and the Bible tells us that as a result of this sanctification, that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Alright? So, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. He quickened our spirit. That spirit, which once upon a time was dead. That spirit part, which once upon a time was not interested in the gospel, in the word. I always remember telling us that I have gone through Bible classes before I became a believer. But during that time, I just read it like any book. But after having accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and as the Holy Spirit quickened my spirit, reading the Bible today is different from reading the Bible then. And I'm sure many of you have similar experiences like this. 
that you had Bible knowledge as one of the class that you took or one of the subjects that you took even for your SPM examination. But it is a big world of difference. When the Holy Spirit quicken you, you read the Word of God in a very different dimension. As someone quoted, and I love this quotation, Robert Bay says, At Bethlehem, it was God with us. Emmanuel. At the cross in Calvary, it was God for us. He carried our sin. He carried our shame. And at Pentecost, on the day when the Holy Spirit came upon all the believers, it was God in us. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. We are saying amen to that. That today, it is God in us. Now, how does the Holy Spirit help us? There are many things that the Holy Spirit will do in our lives. But today, I would just like to focus on one which I think is very needful to many people during this pandemic season. And that is, there is life and peace through the Holy Spirit. Don't you need that? I need that even as a pastor in the midst of this escalating number of cases that are around and sometimes just looking at the news and, and reading what is happening is enough to strike a lot of fears and uncertainties, isn't it? But I have good news for you. There is life and peace through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! That even though there may be a storm that may be there, but Jesus is right here with us in the boat while we are going through the storm. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says, The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is is life and peace. Let me read that again. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. You see, sometimes we delight in reading the word life and peace and so on and so forth. But when we read scriptures like this, we have to ask, what does this mean? And how does this actually work in us. So, my dear friends, in order to assist us in our understanding, let me bring you back to how God made us. Then from there, you will understand this verse better. You see, my friends, when God created us, He created us with a body, soul, and a spirit. That's right. Don't forget that. You are not just what you are from the outward appearance. That apart from this body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Paul wrote about it. And when he said this, he said, May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, there it goes. We have a body, soul, and spirit, as you can see from this chart. Alright? Some ones coined the word tripartite. That's right. If you would like to make use of the word, you can say, God created us as a tripartite being. That I am a spirit being that have a soul, Living in a body. How would you like that description? We are a spirit being, having a soul, and living in a body. That's how God created us. Now let me explain a little bit more. What do you mean by the body? I'm sure that you understand that this, or what we have and what you see right now is the body. And it is synonymous with the word called flesh that you will often read in the Bible or often used in the Bible. So these two words can be inter interchangeably used, body or flesh. So the body is represented by what we call the five senses. 
All of us have these five senses. Now, what are these five senses? I'm sure many of you will know. Sound, the ability to be able to hear. Sight, and then smell. All right, so we have our ears that's able to hear, our eyes that's able to see, as well as our nose that's able to smell. And then not forgetting that this body of us have what I call the sense of touch, that we're able to touch and we're able to sense. And then lastly, of course, the ability to taste. All right? So we have this body that is represented by these five senses, sound, sight, smell, touch, and taste. What about the soul? As I preached before, the soul is represented by our mind, what are you thinking? It is inside your soul. Your emotion. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling elated. Oh, this is a weekend. I get my rest. Or some of you will say, I'm facing very fearful. I wonder how many. Probably the government has announced by now. All right? What about the EMCO, MCO and things like that? So you have a mixture of emotions right now. And also, the soul is represented by the will. Your decision, your will. Alright? The, the, the way that you make up your mind. So, so is the soul is, is represented by these three components. The mind, the soul, and our will. Now, what about the spirit? Some of you will remember. The spirit is represented by our conscience and the consciousness of God. That's right. Spirit is represented by our conscience. What is conscience? I'm sure that you do not even need to go to a class. If you were to ask a person who have grown up and who have not even gone through a class, a small little boy perhaps, and say, is it right to kill someone? The person will be able to tell you, no, it's wrong. Why? Because the conscience in us, that God has created us, Already we know what is right and what is wrong. Isn't it true? Of course, in the midst of our growing up or in the midst of the exposure of various things, the Bible did touch about the conscience being seared. That sometimes our conscience may have been become numb even because of the conditioning of the, of the pollutants of the world and of the sins of the world that wrong become right. That our conscience no longer prick us because we have become so used to the sins of the day that it become part and parcel of uh, the uh, things that we can accept in life. So the conscience part is in our spirit. The consciousness of God is the same. You and I are conscious that there is a God. That, that he, we as the human beings are the crowning glory of the creation of God when God breathed the breath of life into us, we become conscious that there's a supreme being. That's why in all of the human race, uh, there has always been the seeking for the Creator. Now, why was there a seeking for the Creator? Because God had put within us the consciousness. But because of sin that's affected us, that's why man has been looking around and were not able to see the truth because of sins and because of the enemy who want to distract us. That's why many lost the consciousness of the true and living God. So you can see these three components which I've explained to you, which is a very important understanding so that you will understand how God has created to us. Now, this leads me to a question that I'd like to pose to all of us. Why is it some people are dominated by a lot of negativism? Meaning, why are some people, they are dominated by a lot of stress, a lot of fears, confusion, and depressive feelings? Now, please do not misunderstand me. I'm not saying that as Christians, we should never, never have this negative uh, wipes. We will have because we are human beings. But yet, it is another thing uh, if we are always prone or we are always dominated 
stagnated by this negativism. Now, the scripture explains why. The scripture explains why sometimes some people are dominated by this negativism, are so prone to this negativism. Let me read to you verse 5 and 6 of Romans chapter 8 where it says, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on those what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. I want you to read this two verses carefully again, and I want you to see the three dimensions of body, soul, and spirit is in these two verses. Do you see it? All right? The Bible mentioned about the flesh, which I mentioned that is used synonymously as representing the body. Then the Bible mentioned about the mind. The mind is which component? The mind is the component of the soul. Remember, the soul is the mind, emotions, and the will. And of course, the spirit man. The spirit man. So you can see all these three components being mentioned in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 6. Now, let me go on. The issue here, as you can see from the Bible verse just now, is what governs us. What governs us? Is it the, the flesh that governs us? Is it the, the mind that governs us? You see, the flesh is representing the body, as I mentioned a moment ago. The sight we are seeing, the negativism that we are hearing. The mind is representing the soul, which is our feelings of fear, doubts, confusion, depression. Now, could it be the negative news that we are hearing and the negative sights that we are seeing that are governing us? Meaning, you have allowed your body, you have allowed your soul to govern you because this is very important because what governs you will impact you and what governs you will affect you. Give this a thought. What governs us will impact us. What governs us will affect us. So it predominantly... This flesh of ours, or if this soul of ours, which are very vulnerable, vulnerable in the sense that it is affected by the negativism of the world. It is, it is something which is polluted. Our mind is polluted. Yes, even our flesh is polluted. That's why we age as a result of sin. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So if we allow this to be dominant, the flesh, the soul, as a result, we are governed by it. And if the negativism is the dominant factor that is affecting our body, that is affecting our soul, so naturally, that's why that we are affected so much. Or putting in another word, when the body is affected, the soul will also be affected. If I can give you an example, the negative news. The negative news that you're hearing from your body. Remember? Your ability to hear, the five senses. The negative news causes our mind, our soul to become fearful and distressed. You see, that is why I brought you back to the understanding of body, soul and spirit because you and I must understand how we are wired how God created us, how, how this system, this entire holistic nature of us, represented by body, soul, and spirit, are wired in order that we will be able to trace where or what causes the trouble that is affecting us. Now, let me lead you to another scripture to be clearer. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16 to 17. Let me read to you from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says, So I say, walk by the Spirit. You see, the Bible tells us the solution. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. So friends, if you look at this particular passage of Scripture, you will then understand that the key to life and peace that I'm talking about is to learn to walk in the Spirit, meaning to let the Holy Spirit strengthen your human spirit and thus transform your mind and as a result, touches your body too. Friends, we must not allow the flesh and the soul to control us, to dominate us, but we have to learn to walk in the Spirit as the Bible uses that phrase, to let the spirit man in us, all of us, you have the spirit man, that it will become stronger than the body and the soul. Now, how it will become stronger? It is by the empowerment that the Holy Spirit, is. it's the Holy Spirit that, that touches our spirit. That's why the scripture says that those who worship must worship Him in spirit and in truth. It starts with the spirit man. You see, the natural man will start with body, soul, and spirit. But the spiritual man will start from the spirit, soul, and body. It's the other way around. If you understand what I'm trying to say. It is, it is no longer the, the, the body and the soul that, that dominates them. It is the spirit man that dominates them. It is the spirit man that dictates how you should feel, how you should live. So as the Holy Spirit so strengthened our spirit man, the spiritual fruit of love, joy and peace is therefore developed. Let me read to you from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, where the scriptures say, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Isn't this what we are longing for? Lord, I need more love. Oh Lord, I need more joy. Hallelujah. I need more peace. And the Word of God tells more than that. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, there is the fruit of the Spirit. That as the human spirit allow the Holy Spirit to touch us to strengthen us, what happened? Then the fruit in our spirit, the end result, love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I believe that's the very reason why 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power love and self-discipline. My friends, my brothers and sisters who are listening to this message, I want to tell you, God has not given you a spirit of fear that today if you are living in fear, if you are allowing the news, if you are allowing all that is happening in our country to dominate you and induce a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of depressive feeling, a lot of stress, uh, I ask of you that you will Ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen your human spirit that there will be that faith that will arise from your spirit and today that you will not allow the flesh as well as your soul that dictate how you should live, how you should think but that the spirit man in you will be strong and as you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you then you will have that joy, that love, that peace and as I mentioned to you, there is life, there is peace through the Spirit. Hallelujah. So, what should I do or what should you do in order that we may have life and peace through the Spirit? Very quickly, three things. Firstly, don't just be a natural man or a woman. Be a spiritual man. Be a spiritual woman. Let me repeat that. Don't be just a natural man or a woman. Be a spiritual man. 
be a spiritual woman. And I believe that Jesus exemplified this for us when He was the Son of Man. Yes, when He took upon Himself the nature of a man. That night, before He was crucified, His soul was in great turmoil. He didn't want to die if He could. But He moved past His emotions and He prayed, Not my will, but yours be done. He moved beyond His emotion. Things didn't get better immediately. But in the end, Jesus emerged victorious through the greatest trial that He went through. So, my dear friends, each day, ask the Spirit of God to strengthen your spirit. Each day, be conscious of the spirit man which is part of us. You see, all of us, we know how to take care of our flesh. Every morning, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, we comb our hair, and then you do whatever makeup possible so that you will appear nice body. And some of you, you motivate yourself so that your soul, you will feel nice. You know, you sing happy songs and all that so that you will have a good start. We know how to take care of our body. We know how to take care of our soul. My friends, you must also know how to take care of your spirit. You must be conscious that there is this spirit part of us. You and I must be conscious of the Holy Spirit that the Lord Jesus has given to us on the day of Pentecost since then and even right now because the Holy Spirit is one of His tasks as the Bible says He is our comforter how would you like that term? He is our comforter He is our counsellor yes the Holy Spirit is here to assist us to strengthen us So, we must learn, as the Bible says, walk in the Spirit and don't lean on your flesh and on your emotion. And when you begin to do so, you will slowly detach yourself from that dominant fear of panic attacks that some of you may sometimes suffer from. Because as the Spirit man takes over, and even I speak to you right now, that the spirit of fear, the spirit of stress, the spirit of death that you are thinking of, even that's been bothering you, shall be rebuilt and removed by the power of the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood of Jesus right now applied to you in your mind, in your soul, even right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So learn. Learn to be the spiritual man. Secondly, learn to read the Word of God Why? Because that is the food for your spirit. We know how to feed our flesh. Come on, we know how to feed our flesh, as I say. But feed your spirit. Feed your spirit with the Word of God because as the Word of God strengthens your spirit, your spirit will then give birth to the fruit of the spirit and as a result, it will overcome. Love will remove hatred. Joy will remove unhappiness. Hallelujah. Peace will replace confusion and doubts and fears. Hallelujah. And then lastly, spend time praying in the Spirit. Spend time praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat it again. Be the natural, be the spiritual man. Don't be just be the natural man. Number two, read the Word of God. Feed your spirit with the Word. And number three, spend time praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 7, 27, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I I propose that you will read this carefully because this is such a dynamic power that God has given to us, the language of tongues. 
You say, but pastor, I don't even understand. It's not for you to understand. It is a language that is spoken to God. And why is that language necessary? Because frankly speaking, sometimes you are going through a crisis, yet you do not even know how to put it into words. Am I right or not? And sometimes you, people ask you, what are you going through? All that we can do is cry. Because it's so overwhelming. And not only overwhelming, but the fact is that we do not even know how to describe the, the pain that we, we may be going through. So the expression here, here is the Holy Spirit. Even as we get to pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, what happened? Is that the Spirit of God intercedes on our behalf. And the power of this spiritual intercession is that the Spirit knows what is the will of the Father and He intercedes according to the will of the Father. You see, our, our, our language that we use sometimes is dominated by what we want, what we feel. And sometimes what we want, what we feel may be outside, not in alignment with God's purpose. But the language of the Spirit is that the Spirit of God lead us in alignment to the purpose of God. It's a powerful tool. So don't ever think that, oh, I, I do not know what I'm speaking. It's not for you to understand. It is a mystery. But yet, it is a power. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you, I'm going to call Pastor Shirley to lead you in a song, Come Holy Spirit. It, it is a prayer. I want you to sing this song like a prayer. And then, I'm going to go into praying afterwards for the strengthening of the spirit man which I feel is very necessary because to be very frank with you most of us are allowing our flesh our soul to be so predominant that the spirit is so very tiny so very small that's why we can so easily be overcome but we're going to pray God will strengthen the spirit man we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will touch our spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. He is here to partner with us, to touch and strengthen our human spirit. And then, we're going to pray for those of you who are yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we're going to believe together that today, or even tomorrow, that you're going to experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit in a dimension that you're going to break out in new tongues. Hallelujah! 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 So, begin to sing this song right now. Come Holy Spirit. Sing it as a prayer. Sing it from the depths of your heart even right now. Come Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing, come in your power. I love you Holy Spirit, you are captivating my soul. I grow to love you more Come Holy Spirit Fall on me now That's right Holy Spirit come I need your anointing oh, Come in your power We need you so much I love we you need Holy you. Spirit You Never are love our soul. In my soul That's right I go to love you more. Oh, yes. I'm reaching for I'm reaching your out. heart. I'm reaching you out to you. My life in your oh, head. Lord, help us. Drawing me closer. There will be a thirst. I feel your power. There will be a hunger me. for you. Nothing compares oh, to the yes, place oh, Lord. where I can see you Thank face you. to face. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. Oh yes.
reach out with me as I pray together right now. Father, oh Father, how we need a gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful that we do not have to beg for it because you have given the Holy Spirit to reside in our hearts ever since we accepted the Lord that because of the blood of Jesus that cleanses our innermost being that we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer today is that Lord, help us that we will be more conscious of the spirit person because oftentimes we have neglected this spirit part of us. We know how to take care of our body. We know how to take care of our soul. Lord, but sometimes we neglect the spirit person. I pray, Lord, strengthen that spirit man. Strengthen that spirit person in us. Lord, let the spirit person become the primary, Lord, control over our entire being. Then I ask of you also right now, Holy Spirit, come, we need you because this human spirit will be useless until and unless that the Comforter comes and awaken us and begin, O oh God, to quicken us. So Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you will touch the human spirit, O oh God. That as a result, the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control will be birthed. Hallelujah! For we need all of this, O oh God in such a time that we are living in. So Holy Spirit, right now, strengthen every single person. That every single person that's listening to this message, that from henceforth, that we will be the spiritual man. Hallelujah. That we will be the spiritual women. Hallelujah. That no longer, that we will allow our flesh, our soul to dominate us. But we will allow the spirit person in us strengthened by the Holy Spirit that it will then dictate uh, how that we should think uh, what we should think oh God so that we will not allow all of these things that are we surrounded with uh, begin to affect us oh God but today that it did through the Holy Spirit there will be life and peace hallelujah through the Holy Spirit I pray right now for all of those who have yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit and if you are those who have yet to experience the ability to speak in tongues I want you that you will just raise up your hand and say this Holy Spirit I need you fill me right now fill me right now fill me right now hallelujah 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 and start giving thanks to God verbalize it hallelujah Verbalize it. Speak it out. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Think of nothing else. But just focus on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 And you're living hard right now. Some of you are going to break through by speaking tongues. Some of you are going to break through right now. Right now. Hallelujah. While you are praying together with me, you're going to break through in tongues. You're going to speak in new tongues. I declare. Hallelujah. The fire of the Spirit will come upon you. The fire of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The fire of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Yes, speak in thanks for a while. Come on, everybody. Everybody, speak in thanks for a while. Pentecost. Pentecost again. Hallelujah. Oh, Pentecost again. Hallelujah. Oh. As you 
begin to pray in tongues. Uh, I see my great headaches uh, being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see rheumatism, rheumatic pains in the joints uh, being touched by the power of the Lord Jesus even right now. I see insomnia being touched by the power of the Holy Spirit right now. I see heart palpitation, yes, being healed right now by the power of the name of Jesus. I see depressive feelings leaving you even right now and being replaced uh, by peace, joy and love uh, of the Holy Spirit right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That every spirit of death even that have been uh, haunting you right now in Jesus' name is leaving you right now, leaving your environment right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Because the spirit person it's going to arise, hallelujah, as you begin to pray in tongues. And I see all things happening right now, even in your living hall, wherever you are, that you are going to be surrounded by all of this life, hallelujah, and peace through the Holy Spirit. So Lord, I pray right now that what you have begun in your work, in your word, you will bring it to its completion, hallelujah. And you will touch your people and you will bring total healing to those who need the healing touch, oh God. And you'll bring restoration to those who need the restoration. Lord, whether it be their physical well-being, their mental well-being, that today they will know the key to it is when the spirit person is being touched by the Holy Spirit. And all of these things are going to be renewed and touched by your almighty power. Thank you, Father. Through Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Receive your victory. And some of you, you prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and you have prayed with tongues. You broke out into tongues. And some of you, you are going to experience it later today or even tomorrow. And as long as you keep on seeking, I can guarantee you, you will receive because you don't have to beg anymore. It's a gift given and you just have to receive it by faith by concentrating on it. The Lord bless you even as you listen to these announcements. Let's worship the Lord by our giving, shall we? I thank the Lord for many of you who have been faithful tithers and giving towards missions. Some of you have been giving towards what we call MCO funds so that with these funds, we're able to help those who may be affected by the pandemic. We have given out more than 50,000 ringgit to help various people and uh, together with many other donations that came in through uh, in kind that we are able to uh, minister to uh, hundreds of families out there so thank God for your faithful giving in different areas and as you can see through touch and go boost as well as bank transfer alright so as you give uh, may I remind you that this coming week our Wednesday prayer altar 
uh, is going to be happening on Tuesday night so that uh, Wednesday, all right, some of you may still be working out there. Uh, it's a holiday, so we'll give you a good holiday. So Tuesday night, we're going to gather together to pray as a church, especially in the midst of all that's happening around our country and the world. We need to come together to pray. All right, so even as some of you are giving your offering, I want to pray right now, shall we? Father, we look to you. You have been our provider, and that's why we're able to give. And I ask of you, continue to provide for us. And Lord, that you will touch those whose business may be affected, jobs may be affected, that you will make yourself real, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Lord, you will continue to open new doors of opportunities. Father, I pray, Lord, that your sovereign hand will be our country in the midst of this pandemic problem. Lord, only you have the answer. Lord, that the answer is not in men, not in government, but the answer is in you. And we pray that out of your mercy and your grace, as your people turn our face and look to you, O God, in intercession, in repentance, you will come and rescue us, O God, by causing the, the, the curve to be flattened, O God, and this pandemic, Lord, will not continue on, but it will have the divine answer for us nationally, as well as internationally. Touch those who are in the ICU. Give them a divine visitation, O God, that they shall be healed and touched, O God, Lord, that the fertility's numbers will fall in Jesus' name and many are going to be out of the ICU, healed by you, O God. Thank you, Jesus, O God. Give your people the blessings of life and peace even through the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. And now, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and your families and give you peace from now and even forevermore. And God's people together say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. May you have a safe and a blessed week. Amen.